Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's good to welcome and greet you, those worshiping here and those worshiping with us at home. Our service will include Holy Communion today, so if you're at home, you might want to have your bread or your uh, wine and or grape juice uh, with you for our service uh, of communion later uh, in our worship today. So we've got a lot of exciting things going on. So many exciting things going on today. We are blessing backpacks, uh, both ones that um, will be donated to elementary schools around town, but also the backpacks of our very own students. Um, and teachers that are going off into a new school year. So we'll have that uh, portion of our service um, here in just a little bit. It's exciting stuff. And rally day for as we welcome our children back uh, to learning and uh, yep. growing in their faith uh, downstairs. We're looking forward to that. And some of us are going later to see and cheer on the Chattanooga Lookouts. That's right. Against the Trash Pandas. So it's a very exciting day in Trinity's uh, life. Absolutely. And so mm -hmm. we're glad Glad that you're a part of our worship with us uh, on this day. So let us prepare our hearts and minds as uh, we meditate upon the prelude. Oh, we already had the prelude, I think. <laughs> well, you know, when we used, to, it's been, I'm, I'm adjusting, but we used to be when we did 9:30 service. We had Jim play some intro music until we got started, but now we're live at the 8:15 service. The prelude was beautiful, by it the way. It was beautiful. All Thank right. You. So. <laughs> How about I invite everyone to stand for the confession and forgiveness? That what do you sounds think? good. That sounds good. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us. Let us put aside falsehood and speak the truth to our neighbors. For we are men. I invite you to stand or I mean, sit or kneel. Lord, we confess that there are times when we fail to demand the truth from ourselves or from others. Forgive us, Lord. And while we know there are times to be angry, we confess to having let the sun go down on our anger, making room for the devil in our hearts. Like these, we confess we have at times taken that which is not ours. Rather than honestly working for our own needs and the needs of those longing for help, we admit that evil talk has come forth from our mouths. Rather than graceful words that build up, forgive us, Lord, that we might put away all bitterness, wrath, anger, wrangling, slander, and malice. That we might be kind, tender hearted, and forgiving of one another. In this way, you will repeat what God does for you now, the forgiveness of all your sins. By God's grace, you are forgiven. Amen. Let us therefore be a fragrant offering and sacrifice for the world as beloved children and imitators of God.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread always, that he may live in us and we in him, and that strengthened by this food we may live as his body in the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, and I think any of our uh, students that maybe brought a backpack today can come on up. We are um, really grateful to the congregation. Uh, these are just some of the backpacks. Others are in the gym, but we collected 42 backpacks plus enough supplies for another 42 backpacks. So they're very generous and they're going to be going to DuPont Elementary School, uh, 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 one we have a relationship with and a uh, school that uh, serves a lot of uh, children who are uh, uh, below the poverty level. So it's exciting uh, to be able to provide these gifts uh, to them and uh, they in turn to their students. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a blessing of the backpacks. Mm -hmm. And so Pastor Elise for this first part is going to be the leader and our response is going to be God is with me. So I want to say that with you at the end of each response. You ready? Okay. When I'm going to bed so that I can be ready for school the next day, God is with me. When I'm waking up and eating a healthy breakfast to start the day, God is with me. When I'm getting on the school bus or being driven to school, God is with me. When I meet my teachers and new friends in my class, God is with me. When I'm playing with my friends at recess, God is with me. When I'm finding the right school bus to ride home, God is with me. When I'm telling my family about my day at school, God is with me. When I'm praying at night and thanking God for my family, my friends, and my school, God is with me. So let us all pray together. Let us pray. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. They stand here ready to receive your blessings, and they commit themselves to study and learning in the school year ahead. We ask your blessing on each of them. Further, we ask your blessing on these backpacks. They will hold the schoolwork of each student and will be carried from home to school and back again. As these students carry these backpacks, may they be reminded of the love and care of this congregation that surrounds them each school day. We pray as well for the 
educators, staff, and administrators in our schools. May they also be sustained by your blessing. May they be reminded that this congregation embraces their call to teaching and learning and surrounds them with love and care as well. Finally, we ask your blessing on these backpacks and school supplies that will be given to students in need, that through them they may know your love. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus, who we seek to follow day by day. Amen. We wish you well as you start your, your new school year. And now we continue with the reading of the scriptures. Our first reading comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning with verse 4. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. And then he went, in the strength of that food, forty days and forty nights, to Horeb, the mount of God. The word of the Lord. Be we read responsibly a portion of Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I call in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Our second reading comes from the epistle to the Ephesians, the fourth chapter beginning at verse 25. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord.
St. John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one who can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread of heaven that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It's time now for the children's message. So, uh, guys, I, I want you, you play soccer, right? I believe both of you play soccer. So, when you play soccer, sometimes you get a penalty, and the other team might get the ball or, or get a get a kick or free kick or something. But sometimes you do something wrong, and it is so uh, bad a foul egregious that the referee does something. They hold something up. Do you know what I'm talking about? A yellow card. They throw up a yellow card. And that's sort of like a warning, right? And what's the next color they throw up? And what happens when you get a red card? And how does that affect the rest of the team? That's right. They, 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 they can't substitute, so they're down a player. Isn't that right? And so that's tough. So it not only affects you, but it affects the team, right? Well, Paul today, in the, in, in, in the second lesson from the book of Ephesians, is talking about uh, when we do things wrong. And uh, he suggests that what we really need to remember is that all of us sometimes do things that lead to penalties. And sometimes we do things that are even more difficult than that. We get a warning maybe. And sometimes what we do affects the whole community as a whole, right? But what Paul wants us to understand is that sometimes other people do something wrong and they get the penalty, but sometimes it's us that gets the penalty. And so Paul says we should forgive one another just as God in Christ Jesus forgives us. So we need to remember that we're all sometimes on the wrong end of a penalty and as a team we need to remember to forgive one another. So there we have that. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Have you ever said something that you later regretted? There was a man named Bob Monkhouse who says that one day he got angry at the manager of a local dry cleaners and he expressed his anger rather forcefully. In retrospect, Bob says he probably left that manager with a bad impression. He knows now because one day recently, Bob took and put a red ballpoint pen in the breast shirt of his white dress shirt, the, the pocket, without putting the cap on. It left a ghastly red stain, a dark, deep stain right there on the pocket. His wife said it couldn't be washed out, but she'd take it to the dry cleaners. So she took the white dress shirt with the dark red stain to the same dry cleaners where Bob had exploded. The manager took a long, slow look at the dark red stain and giving a sideways glance at the wife, he said, good shot. <laughs> I think that Bob probably did not leave a good impression with that manager. Have you ever done something, got angry, and you said something you wish you hadn't said? 
Maybe you know the old story about the man who developed a bad habit of cursing. Whenever he got angry, he said things that he should have kept to himself. Well, one day after a tirade in front of his young son, and the young son repeating some choice words right back at him, he knew he needed to deal with this bad habit. And so he went and saw his pastor. The pastor said, well, whenever you get angry, from now on, instead of cursing, why not sing a hymn? The man said, well, he was willing to give that a try, but he didn't know many hymns. So the pastor gave him a hymn book. A couple weeks later, the man comes back, and the pastor says, how are you doing? He said, well, I'm doing pretty good, except I have a problem. What's that, said the pastor? He said, I'm ready for a new hymn book. In our scripture lesson for today from Ephesians, St. Paul writes this, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. So what does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is that part of the Godhead that dwells within us. It's that voice of God that speaks to us about God in, and about our relationship with God and our ongoing relationship with others and even our ongoing uh, relationship with ourselves. To grieve the Holy Spirit is to try to live life in a way that is contrary to the person God created you to be. It's a challenge to try to live this new life in Christ Jesus. Just look at all the details that Paul describes in our lesson for today about this new personhood. We're not to get angry. We're not to be deceitful. Not to have malice in our hearts. Not to let corrupt words flow from our lips even when we're angry at the local dry cleaner. But, fortunately, in these last two verses of chapter 4, Paul indirectly gives us a formula that should help us. The first part of the formula is this. Look inside. Look inward. In other words, take care of what's inside of you. You know, when something happens in life, it's what's inside of us will determine how we will respond. It's not what comes to us from the outside, but rather it's what's already on the inside that will determine how we will behave. We can never control someone else's actions or behavior. All we can always do is control our own behavior. So Paul calls upon us to look and take care of what's inside of us. I suspect that if we all did that, we would find some aspects about our lives and we would find dark spots in our hearts that we'd rather not have there. And so Paul calls upon us to look inward. But that's not the end of the journey. You see, the Christian faith is not a mystical faith where we sit around and navel gaze. We begin by looking inward. But that's not where we stop. So here comes the second part of the formula. Look outward. In other words... Take care of our relationships. Paul says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, and forgiving others as God in Christ Jesus has forgiven you. The Christian faith is not just one of looking inward. We also look outward. We're called to be tender-hearted and kind. The minimum requirement of the Christian faith is to treat others with kindness and tender-heartedness and forgiveness. This kind of kindness can be contagious. There's a wonderful story that comes out of the life of the great missionary Albert Schweitzer. And Schweitzer was traveling to Aspen, Colorado. And he stopped in Chicago to trade plane, uh, trains. And while he was waiting, he was standing on the platform and answering questions 
by reporters. When suddenly a woman walked by carrying this big suitcase, heavy, and Schweitzer excused himself and Dr. Schweitzer walked over to the woman and offered to take her suitcase and he accompanied her to the car of the train that she was boarding. He then turned around and went back to the cluster of reporters, but they weren't there anymore. Upon seeing Dr. Schweitzer's example, every one of them went and looked for someone else carrying a heavy piece of luggage to help. There was a reason why Dr. Schweitzer did this. He says in his autobiography that one day he and his wife were boarding a train in Africa and they had an enormous amount of luggage that they were struggling with when suddenly a physically challenged man whom Dr. Schweitzer had treated at his mission hospital stepped forward and offered to help. The man had no baggage of his own because as Dr. Schweitzer said, he possessed nothing. Dr. Schweitzer was moved by this man's offer and graciously accepted. And as the two of them walked side by side in the scorching heat, at that moment, Dr. Schweitzer vowed that from that moment on, as a memento and a reminder of this man's great kindness, that whenever he was at a station, he would always look for someone else to help who had a heavy burden. That vow, Dr. Schweitzer said, he always kept. You see, we can't just look to our inner righteousness. We must also be concerned with our outward witness our witness of concern for others. Paul calls upon us to be kind and tender-hearted. But that's not the end of the journey either. We're called to look inward. We're challenged to look outward. But Paul also reminds us of this. We need to look upward. We need to look up. Paul writes, forgiving one another as God in Christ Jesus has forgiven you. We forgive because God has forgiven us. But that's not all. Paul also says, be imitators of God. As dearly loved children, live a life of love. Here is the answer to all of our anger, all of our bitterness, all of our malice. Here is the answer to being kind tender-hearted and forgiving. We're to be imitators of God. Charles Shedd once applied this to anger. He said, the best way to lose your temper is to lose yourself in God. There is our hope to lose ourselves in God. We are called to look inward. We're called to look outward. But above all, we're called to look up to the God who is the ground of our hope. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that forgiveness is easy. But it is possible because all things are possible with God. Some of you may still remember the movie Dead Man Walking and the book by the same name. It tells the true story of Sister Helen Prejean, who was a nun who developed a special relationship with Scott Ponslet, who was a death row inmate. In her book, Sister Prejean tells about another man, Lloyd LeBlanc, whose son was killed by a man named Patrick Sonier. And Sonia was executed for his crime. Afterwards, LeBlanc told Sister Prejean that he would have been content with a prison sentence for Sonia, that he had come to the execution not out of a sense of revenge or a sense of retribution, but because he was looking for an apology. And Sonia did not disappoint. Before he sat in the electric chair, he said, And Mr. LeBlanc, I want to ask your forgiveness for what me and Eddie did. And LeBlanc, in response, nodded his head, signaling that forgiveness had already been given. LeBlanc tells about the day he went with the sheriff deputies to the cane field to identify his son's body. And as he knelt beside David's dead body, he immediately began praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. And he says, and when he got to that part, 
Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. He said he didn't halt. He didn't falter. He kept on praying. And afterwards he prayed, Whoever did this, I forgive them. LeBlanc acknowledges that it's never easy and that sometimes there are times when it's hard to overcome the desire for anger and revenge. He says it comes at certain times, especially on David's birthday. It's as if he's lost him all over again. David turns 20. David's 25th birthday. David gets married. David at the back porch with his children huddled around his leg. David the man, the person he will never get to know. Sister Prejean says, Forgiveness is never easy. Each day it must be prayed for, it must be struggled for, it must be won. The only way I know how to forgive and accept others is for we ourselves to remember we have already been accepted and forgiven. The ultimate approach to dealing with the challenges of life is to look inward, to look outward, and above all, look upward to the God who is the hope of our salvation. Amen.
Let us join together now, confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O oh, Eternal One, whose message to us has always been that our relationship to you is directly related to how we treat our sisters and brothers, bend low your spirit this day and hear our prayers. You may kneel or sit as you are able. Mighty God, we give you great thanks this day for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. May his example of unselfish love and giving be not only our sacrifice for sin, but our model of the godly life. Fill our hearts to overflowing with true gratitude and thankfulness that we might generously reflect the love of Jesus in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Wean us from our tendency to nurture perceived slights and to put hot coals to our anger. Wean us from all tendencies to take advantage of others for personal gain. Wean us from negativity and from becoming bitter, whether or not we think we are justified in our feelings. Wean us from the all too human and common tendency to gossip about others and to slander them in any way. Wean us from carrying malice in our hearts and from giving into anything that would poison relationships with others. Lord, in your mercy. Give us a consistent kindness and compassion for others. Keep us always tender-hearted, even when the world delivers difficult blows and setbacks to us. Teach us once again about your redeeming grace in order that we may learn how to forgive others. Teach us how to live abundantly into the future as victorious and expectant people, greeting each new day with eagerness and excitement. Guide the leaders of the world that peace and justice might prevail for those who are helpless or feeling hopeless. Lord, in your mercy. We present to you all who have special need of your grace today. Keep them in your gracious care, and insofar as we are able, use us to make their burdens lighter. Especially do we lift up to you Pilar, Steve, Gigi, Todd, Jessica and Isabel, Maggie, Jerry and Patty, Jean, Sandy, Michael, Bill, Doris, Gary, June, Rebecca, Andy, Larry, Joshua, Sherry, Britt, David, Art, Barbara, as well as those we name in our hearts are out loud before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all those for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise. The peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. Take a moment to share that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out on us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come and see. Please be seated.
keep you in God's grace. Let us pray together. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. It is good having you uh, in worship with us. Uh, rally day after this service begins. We look forward to that uh, for our children. Also, uh, just a note that those going to Lookouts game, you have received your tickets already, and so uh, we're invited together and uh, meet uh, at the uh, booth where we'll be uh, eating and watching the game. If uh, 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 the box, and if you um, uh, want a carpool, we'll welcome you to identify others who will be going in to, to do that. One or two. I let you know that uh, before the service you saw some pictures of our first two homecoming events and boy they have been uh, it's been really nice just to come together and uh, spend time with one another and uh, sharing a uh, hospitality and uh, playing some games with one another and so those continue on if you've not yet had the opportunity to sign up just call into the church office and we'll set you up with a with a, an opportunity for you to uh, come on out and be a part of uh, the homecoming events also, for the women of the congregation, they'll be going out uh, for lunch on uh, August the 14th at noon, Volcano Crab, and contact Pam Smith or Mary Smith if you would like to be a part of that gathering. Social Missions uh, is starting to begin doing food voucher ministry. Uh, you know, we've been supporting uh, the, the food voucher uh, ministry throughout the COVID-19. We even increased the amount we were giving. It's just that we were not distributing them here. We were uh, having the food bank themselves uh, distribute those, but we're going to start being able to do that soon ourselves. And so if you would like to be a part of this so important ministry to our community, uh, contact Phil Sims. The number is in the, uh, the, uh, the announcements, or you can check up the directory. Also, a Social Mission is looking for cereal and instant potatoes this month uh, for our food pantry. So we uh, share uh, those uh, uh, items with you. Yeah, and just a quick thing um, for me, uh, I'm sure most of you either saw or heard I sent a message out to the congregation uh, this week from me. Uh, if you did not get that email for any reason, or maybe just haven't checked your email yet, and you're like, what is she talking about? Um, I left uh, copies of said note. Um, I think there's some out there. There's some in the welcome area. You're welcome to pick that up, give it a read, and my office is always open, and my cell phone is always on. Thank you, Pastor. Now I invite you to stand for our blessing. Go out and imitate God living in love. Put your hope in God's word and let your own words be truthful and constructive. May sin rouse your anger, but never let anger cause you to sin. And may God always hear your voice. May Christ Jesus raise you to new life and may the Holy Spirit nourish you for the life of love. Go with the blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.